So you want to captain the ranger. Well, do you like planes? Do you like getting flamed on in chat? And do you like grinding a crap ton of experience? Then the ranger is for you. The history for the ranger is kind of lackluster to be said and all and be truthful. The ranger was first designed and built in 1931. It was one of the United States' very first built ships that was designed as an aircraft carrier but this was before world war ii so the design was not the most modern at that time so because of this it did not see much attack or uh defense or anything like that in the uh pacific fleet uh just de because of how slow it was so because of that in world war ii it spent most of its time in the atlantic ocean where the german fleet was just slightly weaker uh for aircraft carriers. The most important things that it was able to do and participate were in Operation Torch and Operation Leader, um, which were basically German attacks uh, off of the shipping of Norway, um, roughly around Norway. Wasn't the biggest or craziest life expectancy, which is kind of sad for the ship because it was like the first design type of carrier, but oh well. The only sad thing was this ship was eventually sold for scrap in 1947, so this is the reason why we never see this ship anymore. Alright, so now I'm going to just do a little rant right now. There is a bunch of people complaining about how overpowered carriers are, how annoying carriers are. Well, as a carrier player and playing on the other side of it, it's just as annoying, to be honest with you. Uh, defensive fire just is very too random and it's just very annoying to go against because sometimes you're good and sometimes you're not but there's just this constant battle of like oh carriers are too broken or oh they're over underpowered it's kind of just determining on how you play this ship to be honest or this whole entire line of ships um, a carrier will focus down anybody that does not have great AA defense. We're looking at you, mid-tier battleships, um, where there's always some exceptions, of course. Or a player that likes to play on his own and charge in all by himself. This is what causes people to get mad, is because they can't be reckless on their own. This is why you have to play this game as a team-based game whenever you have a carrier on the other team. This is just a little rant, and I know you guys are going to hate me saying that, but it's very annoying for a carrier, because I'm only an average carrier player, and everybody's like, oh, carriers are god tiers. It takes a lot for a carrier to do any type of damage in this game, to be honest with you, because you got to fly halfway across the map just to maybe hit your targets. So, this is why I'm just a little annoyed with people saying, oh, carriers are broken and whatnot. It takes a ton of skill and knowledge to perform as a top tier carrier player. So that's just my little rant. Moving on with the video. Overall, the US Ranger is a decent beginner guide, beginner ship for anybody. It's the first time that you ever get a fighter squadron to protect your ships. You can either play that um, aggressively, so you, whenever you see another fighter or another attack planes or whatever you want to call it what well, another squadron coming towards you you can be pre preventive and try to protect your ships um by putting your air fighter squadron around them like around them or you could try to intercept them this is the hardest technique of doing it you have to be really good and the other guy just has to keep flying in a straight line um as you progressively get up the chain you will have bigger radiuses for your fighter squadrons but at this low tier whenever you first get it it's very small so it's pretty much put it in front of your uh other ships other teammates um try to protect them as much as possible Overall, the planes themselves, they're pretty good on health. Um, your HE bombs will do pretty much damage against anything. Um, I do notice whenever I use my HE bombs against destroyers, I'm more likely to incapacitate something and actually do damage against them. And it's just that whole def uh, DD dispersion that they like to do just to make it more fair for destroyers, which I totally get. Um, but your 
Cons are your ship is your overall your ship the Ranger itself is super slow and your torpedoes have a very short range and they're kind of slow so you got to play very very careful with these uh, torpedo planes they're very slow and they're ve the torpedoes themselves are slow so it's just like you can't win with their torpedoes but they 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 do a ton of damage if you're able to do and connect any of your torpedoes against any ship so on screen right now I have like the different type of attack styles you always want to slow down as much as possible right before you attack someone um, just due to the fact that you don't want to overshoot which is very popular so you want to pull it back as much as possible possible the speed wise um, and then attack um, and then you'll use one of these three to kind of use as to attack your opponent and right here is some captain skills for you. Overall, the captain skills are pretty generic. You just pick any of the airplane carrier or the aircraft carrier ones, and you're pretty much golden. Uh, there's nothing too special to be picking. Um, certain things help you here and there, but not crazy. Like, it's pretty generic across the board for all carrier players. So, here are the points. Overall gameplay with a carrier, it really, really depends on what tier you're in. If you are bottom tier, you are going to be just purely spotting pretty much the whole entire game because your planes are going to be useless against these top tier, tier 8 uh, cruisers and destroyers and even battles. or well, I should put that the other way around. Cruisers, battleships, and d destroyers because they will totally knock out your planes and it's just no fun whatsoever. So you're just gonna be on spotting missions, trying to stay at least five kilometers or 5.5 kilometers out from the ships. You can focus down ships that are on their own, but I would wait. Also, at the very beginning of the game, you want to expend your first uh, attack so that they can reload your planes faster because nine times out of ten, whenever you try to actually attack someone, you're going to lose all your planes. So it's easier if you lose or you use that first wave of attack so that they can go refuel and rearm so that whenever you're ready, to come back to that, either your torpedoes, your dive bombers, or your uh, strike aircraft, that you have those planes ready to go. So if you're middle tier, you don't have to do this uh, as much, or if you're middle tier or bottom tier, you're pretty much going to be golden in tier 6 through 7 and 5. They don't have the best AA defense. Yes, there are a little outliners here and there, but for the most part, you are going to be pretty much fine. So you don't have to expend your first aircraft as a suggestion, and you can actually go in for attack. You don't have to always be spotting the whole entire game. You'll be able to actually do damage, which is so nice. So you always crave to be top tier, but once again, this is the other part that kind of sucks for you as a carrier player. There are no odd tier carriers for you, so you go from tier 6 to tier 8, and it's going to be a heck of a grind between here and there. Of course, there's even a bigger grind after that whenever you're trying to get to tier 10, but that's another video. But for at least for tier 6, uh, you are going to be pretty good against anything, once again, between 7 and below. I be hesitant on some ships here and there. You just want to make sure you start to know what every ship's AA defense is. Basically, if they have an AA defense of 60 or higher, go away, D just turn around or tr attack somebody else. Uh, because I've noticed that it's about roughly 60 and above that you lose pretty much majority of your planes. Even though it's completely random, you have no idea whenever it's gonna happen. Also, be, a f be aware of ships that have catapult fires. Um, that's mostly your cruisers and a few battleships here and there. Once again, I'm just trying to give you everything that you could possibly need um, to succeed as a carrier player because it's pretty rough uh, whenever you get out of tier four and tier six uh, because your planes are not the most accurate and not the most deadly, which is kind of the bummer because there's this just a huge grind to get up to tier eight and tier 10. But you guys can do it. Um, once again, 
you don't want to be super aggressive with your planes. You want to spot first and then strike any lone targets. You get more dangerous as the game goes on or if you need to finish off any targets. So that's kind of what you want to do is focus on the low health targets and uh, spotting the destroyers that are rushing calf circles. But hopefully you guys enjoyed this lovely kind of hopefully a good tip for you guys it's kind of be difficult um especially if you're top tier because it's just like you can't really do too much because they're just too random and it's too deadly because you can't really you don't know what to avoid to be honest with you you don't like you can see the flak but at the same time you can't and then all of a sudden your planes are gone and then the fighter mechanic doesn't make sense about some planes and just pfft. But just be careful with your planes. Try to be as careful as possible if that's the overall takeaway from this video. Is be careful. Be strategic. Because this is more... Playing a carrier is more strategy based than anything else. Because you have a long flight between here and to the next ship. Coming from your carrier to the ship that you want to attack. It's a long flight. So plan your attacks accordingly. With that being said, I am Shadow Ready. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Please leave me likes, comments uh, down below. Make sure to tell me what you guys would like me to play or captain next so that I can give you guys more tips and tricks. And anyways, if you do subscribe, that would be awesome. It would mean the world to me. And other than that, have a wonderful day. Thanks. Bye-bye. <laughs>